we've been talking about the single spine salary structure for a very long time. And um, we, were, we, we had been promised by you that really, almost everybody had been migrated onto it. What is the core issue leading to the POTAC strike? Is it merely migration or that they are dissatisfied with something? What is the issue? Thank you very much. The Polytechnics, the, that's the academic, senior academic members of POTAC. Yes. Their issue has to do with the market premium. Mm -hmm. What happened was that as part of the um, single spine salary structure, before any, you know, institutions already had their own salary structures. And therefore, before an institution migrates onto the single spine salary structure, you need a basis for the migration. Mm -hmm. In other words, you need a grading structure, and the grading structure is determined by job evaluation. Okay. And with that, we have completed with them. We have completed the uh, grading structure for them. Okay. Then we were left with the issue of um, we were left with the issue of market premium. Mm -hmm. Now, already. What is market premium before yeah, you proceed? Already. Mm -hmm. The polytechnics, in, they are on a, they already are on a salary structure, okay. and then they have other allowances that tops up their salaries. Okay. Now, on the single spine salary structure, we don't. What we do when it comes to market premium is basically supply and demand. Mm -hmm. Now, if there is any job that it is difficult to attract and retain that job. Mm -hmm. What you do to the job holder is to pay an amount that will be able to attract and retain that, um, that job holder. So that is what we call market premium. Market premium basically has to do with supply and demand okay. on the job market. So right. if government and the private sector are competing for that same skill, mm. then how much is the uh, government willing to pay? in order to attract and retain that critical staff. All and right. that, is the, that is it about market, market premium. premium. Okay. Yes. So we discussed the market premium with them, and we arrived at a certain percentage. But they, they are not happy with it. And they want something higher than what we have given to them. But we think that what we have given to them is very fair and is very good. And that is the whole issue about the market premium. The grading structure, there's no problem. We've completed with it okay. by the issues with the market premium. Interesting. We'll get to know what those issues really are. But um, Mr. Solomon Abu from Paul. Yeah. Right. Um, um, well, you are former chairman of POTAC mm. in Kumasi. So I'm sure what POTAC is saying is something that resonates with you. Yeah. What is the problem with the market premium? It, it, it is, should that really lead to a strike as we have now? Yeah, let me let me correct some something now. Uh, okay. Put tag is not on strike. Okay. And um, two. So those are wrong headlines we have. Uh, which I uh, will well, explain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's and interesting. What you just said that um, we have not followed due mm. process. I didn't say that. I, 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 it's important that you give credit to what is said. Okay. I believe that everybody here heard me, those watching, that I actually pulled up headlines. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you, Madam here will agree with me that I said, according to the National Labor Commission, the sit-down strike is illegal. Those are not my words. Let's attribute, let's give credit to who it is due. If you don't agree with that viewpoint, send it to the doorstep of the okay, NLC, okay. not mine. I, I agree. Because I said that clearly, that I, that's what the NLC says. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, I say, Antiva, yes. Uh, right. Um, narrated. We have reached a steam meet on right. the market premium. Mm -hmm. And I think the last time they met at the Minister of Finance, um, after the meeting, um, those who represented us uh, met in Accra Polytechnic. Okay. Um, they resolved that uh, we need to write to Labor Commission. Mm -hmm. And that letter has been sent to Labor Commission that. Uh, when the mandatory period <coughs> expires and then we don't hear anything, then we'll mm. embark on strike. Mm. Now, what has happened on other campuses now is that, uh, you know, the waiting has been too long. And people have some kind of uh, um, 
expectation, which uh, the figure that was uh, given to us was falls short of that figure. And so um, the chairman who reported back could not contain the reaction from the message they give them. And that gave out, came out with that spontaneous as fact. So national, from the national level, we have not declared any strike action. Okay. That is it. So it is not a national strike action by polytechnic teachers. Yes. It's a local one. Well, to, uh, to Takradi. Let me explain. Please do explain, <laughs> because we really need to understand you. Um, <laughs> as I talk now, mm -hmm. the national body, we have in a, a national delegates congress in uh, Bogatanga. Okay. It is there that we, you take the decision that uh, everybody will have to go by that. Okay. So, as I said, from the national front, we have not declared strike. But and we mean, have written to Labour Commission okay. as the law says. Yes. So we have done that. Okay. What do you? What's your response to these news items that Takrade Polytechnic is embarking on a sit-down strike? Sunyain Polytechnic is embarking on a sit-down strike. Kumasi is embarking on a sit-down strike. If you have not arrived at this at the national level, yeah, what is happening at yeah, those see, local um, levels? I think our national uh, leader has already been on a lot of uh, radio and television stations to uh, address this, this issue that okay. uh, we have not declared strike. Mm -hmm. What is actually happening there, I cannot tell, because I'm not in Takrari. Oh, really? I am uh, coming from Kumasi. What's happening in Kumasi? Uh, Kumasi, what happened was that, as I just narrated, when they met and then he relayed what happened here to them, they reacted. He couldn't contain it, and spontaneously people got annoyed. You see, the waiting has been too long. So when and, you got annoyed, uh, can I land? Yes, please do. What actually happened that day was the report. In fact, I wasn't at the meeting, mm -hmm. but the report as narrated to me was that uh, we were told that the figure that was given out, take it or leave it. Mm -hmm. We are not going to top it up. Okay. That is all that the government can handle. Okay. You see, and. Um, as if that was the end. I mean, so when it, they got the message, they felt, no, the waiting has been too much. We're expecting this much. And this is far short of that. So there is a spontaneous reaction. Let me put it that way. So that spontaneous reaction has resulted mm -hmm. in the Kumase branch of Potag not going to the classroom. Yeah, that is true. Is that, that's correct. Yeah, that is so correct. So in effect, they are on strike yes, in Kumase. Uh, yeah. In effect, they are on strike. Yeah, I cannot deny that. You cannot deny yes. that. But you're saying you don't know what's happening in Sunyai and Takrade. No, no. uh, I, I, whatever that is happening, they are it on the uh, news okay. network. Uh, you're not able to independently yeah, yes. confirm, confirm that. Confirm. Doesn't that raise questions for your national front? If Kumasi could take such an action ahead of what is going to happen in Bogatanga? Hey. You see, we started this long way back 206 hmm. we've been knocking on doors we were given something in 208 when you say something what do you mean well we arrive at some uh, <laughs> gentleman agreement <laughs> because just at that time uh, the economic situation was that oil prices were going up food prices were going up and all that so we needed to accommodate whatever was given with a promise that uh, the next meeting, as at that time, um, Fair Wages and Salaries Commission wasn't in place. Okay. We had what we call standing um, negotiating, joint negotiating team. Right. We had our council chairman uh, on the government side, and then NCT uh, on the government side, and then PUTAG and with our rectors behind us, then we negotiate. Okay. So we, after the uh, May negotiation to it, we reconvene in October to it. Mm. And all that we were told that everything should stay. You mm. see, the whole thing stems from salary levels and conditions of service. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. so for far too long, just yet from 206 to 208, we couldn't address all issues. So we had, we had some outstanding issues. And then now we are in 2012. So six good years. And then you are not making progress. So 
people are actually not happy. And let me just stress that if you have somebody trained up to a certain level, coming from one other institution, they go on the same program, they come back, and then the other one is, is receiving something higher than the other. Meanwhile, the polytechnics are helping to stop that sort of agitation on the uh, genius front because they needed academic progression. Now, we are supposed to do Bachelor in te uh, of Technology uh -huh. programs. Now, when you go for accreditation, the requirement is that at least there should be two PAD holders before you are given the accredi accreditation, right? And so when you have two people who have gone to for training, come back, done some work in industry, come back to, and then you want to mount a program, then you meet this, that uh, the salary for one other person who had the same training, everything, or the same level, is receiving something higher than the one in the polytechnic. Obviously, the one in the polytechnic will just go. And so at the end of the day, we are not helping our students to progress. So it creates a lot of uh, problem for us because we cannot help our students to progress and we know how they suffer when they go out. You meet them in industry, when we go on in industrial, we go full up on industrial um, attachment, and we want, we want to have feedback as to whether the training we are giving them, they are actually meeting the needs of industry. Mm. They, tell, they tell us all sorts of stories. And so we feel that if I have done training at the same level, we are all in the same service classification, then, of course, just to help us build the polytechnic system, we let, have to let those who we have used our national uh, uh, resources to train to stay and work. Otherwise, they keep on going away, and then we cannot grow. Okay. That is our problem. So all, you see, some of them are already holding letters. You know, I'm we sure are, we'll come to the details yeah, of that, yeah, okay, because really, okay. I, I realize your response has gone way outside of my question. Oh, I haven't, okay. had, and I haven't had a direct response to my question, which yeah. was why Kumasi did not wait for the whole national body as it were to come out with well, a definitive, a definitive position. It you was, said it was spontaneous, yeah, but spontaneous. really, this spontaneity is what everybody's going to rely on. And the What's national, the use of our national wait, bodies? Really? And the national of, uh, body has come to, out to condemn it. Okay. Okay, so where do you stand now in Kumasi if, if your national body is condemning your action? Oh, now they are all in um, Boga Tanga. Boga. Okay. I think hopefully mm. tomorrow morning they will meet and address this. Interesting. Madam Eva, let me come back to you and find out uh, something from you. What is this figure that we are disputing? Are you able to put it out? Are you able to make us understand why it's a good figure and why it is not? Because the question is to you, and yet Mr. Abu Frimpo on the other side is shaking his head to say no. <laughs> he doesn't want the public to know what the figure is. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Um, before I come to that, mm. You know, we are dealing with a pay policy, right. and uh, the single spine uh, pay policy is a very, very flexible pay policy. Okay. So he gave an example of two individuals who have gone to school. They have come out with this equal qualification. You go to one institution, the person is paid higher than the other. Yeah. That is why we do job evaluation. Now, job evaluation talk, looks at the demands of the job. Do we need that particular skill in that industry? So it is not so much as to whether I have the same qualification as that person. What are you going to use it for? Because the job evaluation we did did not rely solely on um, academic qualification, but there are other factors. If I had 13 factors, mm. academic qualification is only one of them. Okay. So it is, that is not all to what it. What are some of the other factors? We have, um, the, the four broad areas are knowledge and skill, okay. working environment, mm -hmm. uh, effort, mm. and then uh, working environment, effort, and then um, judgment. These are the four main areas. Right. And then we have sub areas, which makes them 13. Okay. The point is that I say it is very flexible because if the polytechnics really needs a particular skill, mm. what we are saying is that we want to separate those who have that particular skill to perform that function that is very similar 
in job description to other other groups like most of the time they are it with the university. Okay. So we want to identify those the, those with those particular skills and then we will remunerate them as such. But where one or two people in the polytechnic have those skills and all others want to hang on to it, mm -hmm. it doesn't help. It doesn't help because you defeat the purpose of the of, of the of the policy. Mm -hmm. The policy is to attract and retain critical staff. So if that job is not critical, if we can go to the market and we can get it at a certain price, mm -hmm. why should we pay a higher price for it? And therefore, the point here is that we have negotiated, not negotiated, but we have discussed this uh, market premium with the Polytechnic over a period of time. And we are telling them that before single spine came, mm -hmm. the difference between you and the investors mm -hmm. were 55%, the difference. In fact, that is what the uh, whole issue is about. It's between Polytechnics and uh, the investors. That's what the issue is about. That is what the issue about, is about. It's between the Polytechnics and the investors. And the difference was 55%. What we have agreed now brings the difference to 11%. Mm. We cannot put them at par because they are not at par. You see, they have, been, they have their separate mandates, and, that, and we have to look at that, and then they deliver on their mandates. We are not saying that because an institution, one institution is tertiary, the other institution is also tertiary. Therefore, they are performing the same function, and therefore, we apply the same salaries and market premium to it. It doesn't work that way. We have on the phone right now Edward Briku Buedu, who is the Secretary Secretary of the National Labor Commission. Good evening to you, sir. Good, good evening. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, we are having a we are in the studio here with um, a rep from the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission as well as from POTAG. And uh, basically POTAG is saying that they are unhappy with what is happening. And they also say that the NLC, if the reports are correct, your judgment that the sit down strike is illegal is not quite right. What do you say to that? Uh, we have already issued a statement to the effect that the strike action embarked upon by members of the POTAG in the three polytechnics i.e. Takradi, Sunyani, and Kumasi is clearly illegal and also uncalled for. The National Labor Commission received a letter of notification to embark upon industrial action on Thursday 23rd February 2012 from the National POTAG. The letter was actually signed by, by the, the General Secretary of National POTAG. But after seven days upon receipt of that letter, if their problem was not resolved by the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission, they would embark on an industrial action. I quickly wrote back to them reminding them that the law says the effective date of notification is the date of receipt of such a letter. And the letter was received on the 23rd of February. So they could not take any action until after the expiry of, of seven days from 23rd February. Only to hear later in the day that those three polytechnics uh, put that members were on strike. So I wrote back to National Potag and indicated clearly that the threat, that the due process is clearly stipulated in Section 159 of the Labor Act as well as Section 160 Labor Act. So if anybody sees those actions, uh, legal, the person is clearly not familiar with the provisions of the law. What does the National Labor Commission intend to do about this? We have invited the National Putag and say we to the National Labor Commission on Wednesday. 
Hello, Mr. Brikubwedi. Hello, sir. Hello, yes. Are you able to reposition yourself? I think that your, your line is cutting a bit. We're having a, bit, a little bit of difficulty. If you can reposition yourself so that the okay. reception gets Just better. Just hold on a moment. Let me position myself okay. you know, to be clear. Are, are you right. clearer now? I think so. Please go right ahead on what you intend to do. Yeah, what I'm saying is that we have invited POTAG and Fair Wages and Salaries Commission to meet with the National Labor Commission on Wednesday, 29th February at 12 noon. Which is tomorrow. At the National Labor Commission for us to see if we can resolve those issues that have led, that, uh, have led to the illegal strike that some members of POTAG have talked on. We are told, and uh, please hold on, because uh, I think that Ms. Abu Frimpong can help us a bit here. You're, you're telling us that all POTAC members are in Bogatanga right now. Yeah, the, 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 uh, the individual politicians, uh, executives are now in. Are you aware of the letter that yeah, he yeah, refers to? Yeah. Are, you going to are you attending that meeting tomorrow? Yeah, they've asked me, uh, me and um, uh, another, another put, uh, POTAC member from Accra Polytechnic to okay. be in attendance. To be in attendance. Yeah. So you will be there. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so um, let me ask you, I mean, and I'm, I'm sure he can hear you as well. What is your stance going in this tomorrow? Because his position is clear that as far as the National Labor Commission is concerned, it's an illegal strike, and that's why they have invited you. Are you going there saying that you are doing something legal? Well, I, I think uh, the meeting is between, we have three parties there. Right. If it's a question of the illegality of whatever, that has happened, then uh, fair wages wouldn't be in attendance. Mm. Then we trust that issue. Mm. I think we, the, the action is that to resolve whatever issue that is uh, bringing about this uh, unrest. Mm. Yeah. Um, let me ask you before you go, sir, uh, that's Mr. Briku Buedi, Buedu, if you can hear me. He's saying that it's not, basic, it's not just a matter of illegality and that if the Fair Wages Commission is there, they are resolving the whole issue. What is really the agenda for tomorrow's meeting? Oh, so no, this line is, is your line is really terrible. The spirit, hello. Uh, hello, if you can hello, reposition, can you yes, we can hear you now. Okay, the spirit behind that to defend the position. I think that I think that we'll do our best to get him back on the telephone line. It's quite terrible. But we have Shaban Abdul Manaf, president of Genoops, on the line right now, I believe. Uh, can you hear me, Shaban? Yes, sir. Good evening to you. And good evening. In the first place, what is the official position of the Ghana, uh, the Genoops, on what is happening so far? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. The line is a bit faint. If you could. I'm asking you, what is? Can you hear me now? Yes, it's better. Okay, what is the official position of Genoops on what is happening right now? Thank you very much. Uh, good evening to you and your fellow, uh, you know, viewers. And then I say good evening to your guests over there too. This is very unfortunate news that, you know, we are just listening because uh, we find it as, as a problem to the polytechnic fraternity if always uh, strike actions would have to be the only way out. Uh, it is true that our lecturers have a genuine cause to fight for and then the fair wages and salary commission too would also have its legalities to battle with. But then we are of the view that any time that these strike actions are embarked on it has always uh, you know difficulties that is posed to the students. So the official of Genoves, as you have asked earlier on, we have even gone, you know, last week we had a meeting with the Fair Wages and Salary Commission, the acting director over there, he explained to us as to the reasons why the POTA would have to go on strike being illegal. To him, he was, you know, he explained reasons to us and we have a lot of uh, understanding from what he was trying to say. And then we had a meeting with the POTAG and the uh, chairman to they also explained to us as to the reasons why they thought that the abstract actions were legal. But uh, in the mix of all these things, I always want to bring out one thing very clear. If you have very big giant elephants like this fighting, obviously it is the grass that is going to suffer. 
So we, the student front and the union, are pleading to both the free wages and salary commission and then the portal to, you know, quickly come to the table and then see whether dialoguing will be the best option because that is what we are having as of now and then uh, grievances will always come but then at the end of the day compromises have to come if uh, there is no compromise in these issues and then we tend to have our ways that we should get them outright i believe that the students will suffer last year you would bear with me that the strike action puts a lot of you know challenges to the academic calendar and this year some of us have even started lecturing others are yet to begin and if this strike actions come you know obviously it is going to disable the academic calendar so we are just pleading because that is the only thing we could do we could not just out you know go out there and then ask our lecturers to compulsorily come to the classroom because they are fighting for a tenure course and then if you know you cannot go to the you know privileges and tell them that they should give them what is due them outright because the favorite history is having legalities to battle with. In the midst of all this, we are just pleading to our lecturers to come back to classroom and then go on with the negotiation processes as it has been the case. And then we are pleading on the government to as it has been the case to see to you know resolving the case because the the year is very very critical for us, especially in an electionary year where we want to have a peaceful environment to study and at the same time go to the polls to have our elections. And if we are having this strike access, I hope it is going to push the economic calendar to the far end, which might be very difficult for some of us to even go and then have our elections. Thank you very much. Shawan Abdulman, President of Jindus, thank you very much. I think you've covered all the other questions I had for you. Let me go back to, <laughs> thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Let me go back to Edward Brikubwedi. Uh, good evening back to you, sir. Good evening. All right, I hope we can hear you better now. You were talking about the spirit behind tomorrow's encounter. Please go ahead with that. Yes, as I said, uh, we have already declared the strike action illegal. But that doesn't end the whole process. We have invited both parties to the commission for them to tell their stories, mm. for the commission to go into the, uh, the issue and resolve the issue because the National Labor Commission is the only institution set up under law to resolve disputes of employer-employee relations. So we have invited them to the commission and we hope that they will be at the commission tomorrow at noon for these issues to be resolved. Will you be asking them to go back to the classroom? Oh, definitely. The, the statement that the Labor Commission issued declaring the strike action illegal concluded that they are to resume their official duties immediately. And if they refuse? So that order has already been given. And what if they do not go back? Oh, of course, uh, there is a provision in the Labor Act which says that uh, if the Commission makes a directive or makes an order, and the party fails to abide by that order, the commission can go to court to go and enforce that order. So if they fail to comply, there are options open to the commission to compel them to comply with the order of the commission. Mr. Abu Frimpon, do you have anything to say to Mr. Briku Bwedi before he goes? Oh, um, I think uh, the only thing I will say is that tomorrow he will see Potag at the office. He will see Potag at the office. Sir, uh, thank you very much for joining us on the telephone lines. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Right. Edmund Bradley says that the SSSS has been uh, fraught with many challenges, and the perception out there is that some people in certain professions and institutions have been made worse off. That's uh, Edmund Bradley's view on the matter. Safu Isaac says, when the elephant walks, it is we the grass that suffer. You mean when it walks? Okay. Government should please do something to calm Potak down. I thought it was when two elephants fight, but I think you have your point there. A while is a haku kind of who says, Ni, my moral sensi sensibilities are always terrified. Whenever I hear a section of Ghanaian workers embarking on an industrial strike action to press home their demands, has the word arbitration gone missing in the Ghanaian labor front dictionary? All right, tomorrow I think that there will be a meeting um, and then. Um, I don't know whether you want to call that one a mediation, but it's an invitation. 
and I hope that it leads to a good conclusion. The next one, if I get her definition well about the market premium, then why should nurses and others get the same premium? Okay, that one is coming to Madame Eva. She's uh, wondering why. So I think someone is trying to argue that some nurses in some places will probably then work more than some other nurses if they have the same qualification. I'll come to you for that clarification. Saeed Inwa says that the NDC should come out and admit the failure of the SSSS policy. All right, Saeed, we move to the next one. Here, Tepe Christian Young says, Ni, in fact, if I am asked to draw the curve for salary payment in Ghana since President Mills assumed office, the gradient will be negative. This implies that the country is moving backward in terms of salary payment. Dixon Desiree in Laura says, Ni, why are the teachers really striking? Single spine has been introduced and inflation is a single digit now, meaning that life is better. So why do they want to strike? I know you are speaking tongue in cheek, Dixon. Issa Hakuk Bene says, Putak has suffered an unfair treatment for far too long. It is therefore in the supreme interest of the government to address their grievances once and for all in the spirit of peace and tranquility, since we all buy from the same market. Onesimo Squisi Epale. He says, please, I suggest that government should do something about the strike because our brothers and sisters are suffering. Francis Waja Jr. asks, is it better they go on strike for government to migrate them quickly? Or you mean that it is better? Okay, you start with S. I think you mean it is better they go on strike. Eric, I'm, all right, Eric, this is an old message from you, but I think we have a few more messages here. Let's take as many as we can. All right, I think that will be it for now for the moment. But I don't know whether Madam Ivan wants to address the issue about the next thing because it comes directly to you. Yes, uh, thank you. The issue is about why nurses are taking the same, same market, market premium. premium. Yes, realize that the nurses, as they are, their job duties, as have been stated, applies to all of them. Mm. You don't have a nurse with this duty here or that duty here. I mean, generally you have the duty and they, you can post them from one hospital to the, to the other or even from one region to the other. Mm. And therefore, basically their job descriptions are the same. Mm. So it means they perform the same function irrespective of where you find them. And therefore, definitely if you're talking about market premium, then the market premium will be uniform. So that, and that's what uh, explains it. White Edmund Bradley says one. Let's, let me take this one before we move back to the studio. He says, I think when salaries and conditions of service of POTAG are upgraded to that of UTAG, and that is the University Teachers Association of Ghana, there would be spontaneous reaction from UTAG, and they may also embark on similar action to press home their claims. Interesting view. As far as he is concerned, UTAG should stay on top of POTAG, and that if it is equalized, then there will be issues because Utah will also then embark on a strike action. I don't know if you have a view on that from the yeah, I just want to some education. Does it mean that an anesthetic nurse mm. can easily be posted anywhere? Are they not also enjoying the same uh, flat rate uh, premium? I guess uh, maybe Auntie Eva can educate us on that because we have four other forms of mm -hmm. the same job, but they, they are all nurses. But they all enjoy the same flat rate. Mm. So you mean that they are yeah. starting next to a place because where perhaps services are not performed? Uh, is that what you're saying? She made is that uh, we have few PhDs, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But then I, there's a, a, a public university here, mm -hmm. Kumasi Polytechnic. We have more PhDs than them, mm. but they are on the flat rate with the PhD holders there. Mm. Just I can count the PhD holders on my fingers. In that so, public university. Yes, in that public university. So to say that uh, we have limited number of uh, PhDs and their job is not the same as that, so for that matter, we, know we don't have to enjoy the same flat rate. So to me, it doesn't sound uh, very clear to me. So it's your well, point that POTAC and UTAC yeah, should because, be on the same flat rate level? Uh, I, I, it's a question I'm asking yeah, you. Yes, I don't want to bring in UTAC, blah, blah, mm. blah, I brought you. But yes. we are talking of people who do the same job as we do. Yes. And honestly, if you come to the polytechnic, mm -hmm. you see, when it comes to teaching our core job, we teach, teach skills. Mm -hmm. If I want somebody to build up, let's say, this table, I have to do demonstration. I have to go through the same processes where I subject myself to all kinds of uh, risk and all that, and see to it that if he's going to use a tenant saw, mm. 
he holds it properly and do the necessary cutting the proper way. I have to measure from stage to stage. I have I need to draw up instruction sheets or um, some kind of flow chart for him to follow and I check at every point where I want to measure this. So this does not happen in these other institutions. You see, so when it comes to details, if the question of finding what is involved in the teaching as a whole, in our case, that apart from the teaching of the theory, we teach skills mm -hmm. and we measure skills. Because at the end of the day, you send somebody out to erect a wall and then suddenly it falls. It's going to cause a lot of... So your answer to me is that UTAG and POTAC should not be differentiated the way we are doing now. No, I don't want to bring UTAG and POTAC. But that's the point you are okay, making as a matter okay, of fact. That is it. That's the point you are making. And the other thing is that if we have nurses <laughs> yes. with different uh, this thing, they are all enjoying flat rate. Yes. There is no reason why we should not. And just as I gave the example, mm. you have a public university mm. where you ha can count the this PhDs, they are all the assistant lecturers, at that levels, they are enjoy a flat rate. So how come the politicians are alone? Okay. At this time, there should be that discrimination. Okay. And just to move on, yes. uh, there's this issue. See, I understand something here. Mind you, we have gone through mediation mm -hmm. after we had some problem with National Labour Commission. Mm -hmm. People, the end result of the mediation is what has informed others who have in a way gone the way they should have gone. Okay. You see? Because the perception the that on strike, you at mean. the end of a certain period, this should be it. There should be parity. Okay. And we feel this is the time mm -hmm. because it has gone through almost three years. Okay. And so why must we wait again? Interesting. But yeah. I mean, I realize that you, you, you have yeah, some reactions. Yeah, yes. yes. Um, there are three things that he, he brought up. The nurses issue, mm -hmm. the one about the lecturers, mm -hmm. and then about the mediation. Yeah. Now, starting with the mediation, it says that they should work towards bridging the gap. They didn't talk about one-on-one. Um, -on -one. They said we should work br towards bridging the gap. And I think I mentioned that we have bridged the gap considerably from 55% to 11%. We have bridged the gap considerably. Number two, we talked about lecturers. I mean, the fact that somebody is a lecturer doesn't mean that the lecturer in the polytechnic and the lecturer in another tertiary institution are performing about the same functions. I think that we have to make it clear. The investors are there. They have their job description, their minimum qualification for doing their job. You also have the... Um, the polytechnics, they also have their minimum qualification and what they are supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And we also have the National Council for Tertiary Education, and they supervise these institutions. And their comment is that the polytechnics, their, their training is mainly skilled based, you know, and therefore we, they require certain qualifications and skills to perform their function. And that is exactly what we are also using in doing what we are doing. The, you are teaching somebody skills, yes, and you, you come out with what, how, many, which, how many degrees and all types of degrees are you awarding? Mm -hmm. You know, you, are, you have the HND, maybe a first degree. I don't know how many second degrees or PhDs they award at the polytechnics. Mm -hmm. But when you go to the universities, you have the first degree. They also have their diploma anyway. They, but then you have a lot of uh, first degree, second degree, even the third degree, a PhD. You know, so it is not so much I am a lecturer, I am a lecturer here, or I am a lecturer there. Now he mentioned, like, he mentioned the nurses. The nurse anesthetist, that's what you yeah, do. Yes. The nurse anesthetist is, uh, we call them um, physician assistants. You have the nurse anesthetist. As nurses is there, then we have the other nurses there. Mm. If you compare their jobs, that is why I said we do job description, we write uh, pick values. You yes. know, if you compare the jobs, they are about similar. It is true that this person is doing uh, this particular job, this one is doing that particular job, but when you pick data and then you compare the jobs, they are about the same. Mm. In fact, if you go to most of the nurses, like I said, they post them anywhere and they, they will have to move. Most of the time when you go to the one-man stations and these uh, public health centers, it's the nurse who is in charge. 
is the nurse who is in charge of the whole health post. Is the nurse who in charge who or the nurse midwife who is in charge of doing the work. So why would you say that somebody who is in charge and attending to um, beds and all other things, how, why would you say that the person is doing a job that is lower than maybe a nurse anesthetist in a regional hospital or um, a district hospital? Madam Eva, I was asking you earlier on, are we able to discuss what the market premium really is, the figure involved and all that, yeah, or it's, it, or it's, it's a secret I? matter? Well, we, we don't want to discuss it in public, but... Mm. Um, I think that one thing that uh, people should be aware, if there's a ruling, the ruling talks, I mean the mediation, there was a memorandum of understanding. Mm. We should try to bridge the gap, and that is exactly what you are doing. Okay. Now, people should understand that the fact that you are a lecturer here and I'm a lecturer there doesn't mean that you are performing the same jobs and the same function. Mm. Each institution has its own mandate. Mm. It has its own basic requirements, and we should look at it that way. Mm. And uh, if there are peculiar situations with certain individuals in that institution, we can look at that rather than everybody hanging on to the few to take advantage of the system. It doesn't work that way because, you see, we are not only working with tertiary institutions. We are working, this is a public sector pay policy. And therefore, we have to be careful what we do. What we do in one institution affects the other institution. It affects the, all the other institutions within the uh, public sector. So we have to be careful what we do and what we don't do. I mean, sometimes uh, people try to flex their muscles and see how far they can go. And that is why sometimes you hear a lot of these strikes. They think that, oh, if we do this, we'll get our way if we do that. But this is a policy. I think that it is very, very good for all of us in the public service. And if we hold onto it, it will help all of us. And at the end of the day, we all benefit from it. Okay. Okay. Great. Can I? Let me come can, to you. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, one. Um, our meetings at the um, Minister of Finance and uh, with fair wages. What we gather is that the question is that there's a problem with the ability to pay. Mm. You see, that is the problem: the ability to pay. Because we have been so, we are so low, and now we have been taken up so high that when this premium that we are clamoring for is laid on top, the government has a problem with the ability to pay. That is the issue. You see, the question of the, the nurses and others is not well answered actually, because I have people. We have a lot of our people going to the universities to teach. You see, and what Potter is trying to avoid moving. is just to stop that movement. Okay. You see, that and uh, what we 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 have had uh, well goodwill all from that during this short period of negotiation, but the the problem that we saw was that is the ability to, to pay because we're so low and it's not the doing of Potter. Mm. If over the period, they've tried to break up. But in any case, what is the meaning of breaking up? You break up something. To me, well, I think we should be apart. That is breaking. You, yeah, you are breach. Mm -hmm. There's a gap in here. You want to break. You break the people at the same level. So if we are not being at the same level, then we have not break the gap. Mm -hmm. That was the uh, the final issue on the 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 uh, mediation. That is what we arrive at. That uh, you should try to. And you see, all along. This is the message. That's what I initially said. That there's that some spontaneous reaction because all along after the long court action and all that, and then we read what uh, the mediation report to our people. They were expecting, yeah, but you said over a period we have gone through that period, and they have to break the gap. And the bridge, there's still a gap. There's <laughs> a gap of 24 point uh, something. No, that's at 11 yeah. Interesting. Let's take some quick messages that have come in. Uh, Ramadan A. Moen says that I find it difficult to understand POTAG. Why are they always quick to compare themselves to UTAG? <laughs> University and Polytechnic are separate with varied mandates. I want to advise POTAG to feel free to move to UTAG if they want to be like them. Why this constant strike actions? That's from Ramadan. Godwin Doche Skydi. Okay, I've already read your message. You're saying that the only language government understands is, is a strike action. We have to be going. Okay, this one says, I, one thing you will soon have problems with 
uh, uh, problems if you think nurses don't have problems. Are nursing teachers the same as nursing clinicians? Okay, all right. So there's someone who is saying that the nurses themselves will, ha will, will show the problems that they have very soon <laughs> because they themselves don't think that they are the same. Wilson M was burning in Aglemo. The government should act fast and the teachers should also take it easy with the government. We have to go, uh, we have a minute to go, I'll, I'll split it in the middle between you, 20 seconds each, so I can also take the 20 that is left to, go, to close the show. What will be your final words? All right, thank you. Um, my final words are that, I think, like I said, this is a very flexible, uh, this is a very flexible pay policy. People sit back and, and think that, oh, this is how it should be. But then the pay policy is there, and I think that if they approach us, we explain everything to them and why we are doing what we are doing, and they will understand what, what we are supposed to be doing in this particular instance. Like I said, the comparison is not because you are a lecturer and the other person is a lecturer, mm. and therefore we should be any um, equal amounts of money. I think we have to understand that we have different mandates to perform our job, and then we look at it, and then we go ahead and do so accordingly your final words sir yeah we yeah, <laughs> i think uh, what i would say is that uh, we went through mediation and then we agreed on bridging the gap so the gap should be bridged mm. that's all okay bridging the gap and the gap should be bridged is what you heard um i don't know do i have another message here before i run out quickly susan chimsa says all nurses are on the same scale do community health nurses and SRN nurses differ in salary? 